Tonight we're going to start with what would be a whole group lesson in an early childhood classroom. So it could be in kindergarten, it could be in first grade. So um, we're going to start with independent reading. When you guys are reading by yourself, you know, when you're not with me, you're sitting at your own desk or wherever you're reading, there's some things that you need to think about. Um, so when you get your book bag, that's the first thing you always do for independent reading is to get your book bag so that you have books that are just right for you. And then you sit and read by yourself. Notice how they have their back to each other. They're reading their books to themselves in their nice quiet voices just so they can hear it. That's part of our independent reading. But after a while it's kind of fun to be with a friend, isn't it? So we have partner reading and you both look at the same book. You sit there, you both hold an edge of the book and you read that book with your partner. You might read one page and they read the next page, but both sets of eyes are on the pages of that book. So you want to be sure that's what you're doing. Now, if I were going to do this in a classroom, I would send two people off to show read by myself and have them come back. I would send two more people off to show how to read with a partner and we would talk about whether they're doing it just right. So that would be one of the first focus lessons I would do in a classroom. And what we're doing here is a focus lesson on procedures. Okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I need that other poster. Now we're going to do one of our phonics lessons. Again, we're going to have the same age bracket. It could be kindergarten or it could be really early first grade. So what we're going to do is we're going to study a name. And when we look at the name, we're first going to read it. And this name is Nancy. Can everybody say Nancy? Nancy. Good for you. Now we're going to clap the syllables. That's how many parts are in the word. So let's see. Nan C. How many parts are in that word? Two. Let's clap it again. Nan C. Now snap it. Nan C. Oh, you guys are good. Now we're going to name the letters. N A N C Y. Study it closely. What do you notice? What do you notice in that name? It has the little word Anne. It does have the word Anne in it. Very good. So she's noticing right here the word Anne. What else do you notice? It has the letter N two times. Awesome. You're noticing the N is in there two times. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Do your names have the same letter more than one time? Yes. yes. Some of you do, yes. So it can be Nan, C, that's your two parts to the word. Now we're going to use this sound of the letters. We're going to go N, A, N, C. Do it again. N, A, N, C. We put it together. Nancy. And I've added down here that N is like in nest for kids that wouldn't be able to get it. The C is like in circle, S has a nest sound. And the A is like an apple to help students that might not have that. Okay, now what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you work with a partner and And work with three over here. Okay. You're going to take this name and you're going to do all of those things with that name and you're going to take this name and do all those things. So go ahead. You might want to come around with the video. You've got more than one card. Bobby. R C I has the word Bob in it. Mm -hmm. It has three B's in it. 
Yes. And the last part sounds like an E. So it sounds the sounds. The sounds. What did you guys notice about the names that you have? This one's a little tricky. It has an I E, but it just it says, says e, e at the end. Oh, that is tricky. So it's got a letter we don't hear. Yes. Right. Are there very many words that have that? Yes. A lot of words have that. You're right. What else did you notice about that name? Three bees. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of bees in a word, isn't it? Just look at that. Are they all looking the same? No. 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 What's the difference? This is a capital B at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Big B. And we call that an uppercase B. What are these then? Lowercase. Lowercase Lower Bs. Good for you. What about Darcy? We heard this like Nancy. <gasps> Sounds the same. I like it that you were connecting it to another word that we've already studied. Yeah. What else? The I makes the E sound. It doesn't sound like it should, doesn't it? No. no, but sometimes that's the way it is. At the end of a word, a lot of times that's the way it is. And what else do you notice? It has a big letter at the beginning too. It does. What is that big letter? D. 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 Very good. Now let's have you try another one. Let's see. And I'm Kayla. I'm You're Kayla. Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have you do this one. Kayla. Two A's. This has oh, two A's. Yeah. And the yes sound, but not in it. No. It's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What you're bringing up is a really important thing here because. Uh, and Lisa, I have your name too. <laughs> I didn't leave anybody out. Right. Um, kids, the most important word that they're ever going to learn is their name. Mm -hmm. And when we start with children learning their own name and looking at their name in powerful ways, we're really helping them to take what they know in their best loved word ever mm -hmm. and beginning to use that in looking at other words. So one of the things I'm going to ask you now is, which of these do you think is the longest of all of the names? Bobby. 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 Mm -hmm. Let's see how many letters does Bobby have? One, two, three, four, five, six. She has six letters. Who else has an I like she does? Darcy, Darcy and Lisa. Very good. Now, let's look at What's the shortest name here? Lisa. Lisa is the shortest name here. Can you find some other words that have some of the same letters as Lisa? Kayla, Jenna, Bennings. Kayla and Jenna, but there's somebody else that also has that A. Darcy. Darcy, Darcy has the A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sounds different, but it's there. Yes. Okay, very good. We'll cut it there. Okay. Um, if I were doing this in a classroom, I would, in, the, in kindergarten, I would pull names out of a bag and I'd say, I have the most important words in the world right here. And then I would give it to each student. And then I'd have another bag with all their names in and I would draw out one name and that would be the star for that day. And they'd get to wear a star and we would study that name that day. And then we can, when we add the next day's name, then we can do comparison back and forth and, and go through all of the study things. So these are things we do early on when we are 
teaching kids letters and sounds. One of the things that I, when I was at Maplewood Richmond Heights, I worked, after the first few years, I worked only in the second through sixth grade and then did staff development for all elementary teachers. I had other reading specialists I trained to do some of the same things I did in the other building. And uh, so we taught them to do these kinds of things there too. But I had two kids that came into second grade and did not know all their letters and sounds. And we have had that. Yeah. And one of the things I found that was the most effective, in two weeks they knew all of their letters and sounds. And as we, uh, the teachers in the grade level took digital pictures of all of their kids. And I used all of the ones from, like Mark was the one, I used all of the pictures from his classroom and had an alphabet book with A, another page with B, and anybody whose name had that as a start went on that page, the picture went on that page. It was cheap and easy to do. And we had a different classroom that the kids weren't in, but they knew him. We had Zachariah, what was his last name? But it started with Z also. Oh. So, you know, it, names that you wouldn't normally, we had a Quentin with a Q, mm -hmm. so we were able to put those kids' pictures on pages that you wouldn't normally have. And they, by going through and seeing what the person's name was mm -hmm. and the picture, and sometimes we'd have an A that's long and an A that's short both with pictures, and then they could learn both of those sounds while we were going through. But in two weeks, they knew them. I thought, I'm going to have to buy it something that's really going to help them learn these names. But this works so well, we never bought anything else. Mm -hmm. So just a, just a clue as to some of the things you can do that would, would help. Okay, now the next thing we're going to videotape, I'll take that down, because we don't need it in the background, would be the first guided reading lesson that I would have in first grade with my lowest group. This is a group that doesn't have one-to-one -one and doesn't have, um, yeah, they don't have one-to-one -one for sure, left or right, either one. So here we go. Is the video running? Yeah, it's still running. Okay. It's, I've got it, that one continues to go in, and then this one is for us. Okay. This one is called Funny Things. Look at those socks. Would you wear socks like that? Sure. You would? <laughs> wow. Well, I wonder who wears socks like that. Bobby wears them, but who else do you think would wear <laughs> socks like that? Oh, look at that. I think that's a funny thing, too. What do you think that is? Hats. Yeah. Looks like a hat, doesn't it? Okay, I am going to point to the, pic the words and show you how to read it. Look at the funny socks. Oh my goodness, look at that shirt. <laughs> look at the funny shirt. Whoever is wearing this is really funny, I believe. <gasps> oh my goodness. It's like a band uniform jacket, but what are those <laughs> circles on there for? Look at the funny coat. You think that coat looks funny? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Oh, no. you guys need to be styling it. <laughs> Look at that hairdo. Look at the funny wig. When might you wear a wig like that? Halloween. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See them in the stores then, don't we? Look at the funny hat. <gasps> what is it? Uh, it's a clown. clown. Look at the funny clown. Just look at him when he has all of his outfit together. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? He looks pretty funny. <laughs> he does look pretty funny. Now, I have special books just for each of us today. Look what it says. Funny, Funny things. things. Okay, I want you to all open up to the first page. Whoops, did I skip a page? I did. 
Look at the funny shoes. Okay, all of you open up to that page. And Bobby, you get to use my book. Yes. I want you to put your finger under the word look. Look. Okay, then I want you to say look. Pick up your finger. Put it under the next word. At the funny shoes. Okay, Lisa, will you go ahead and read the next page to yourself? The rest of us are going to wait a second. Read it just up loud enough I can hear. Look at the funny shoes. You can socks. start. Look at Keep going. the funny socks. You can start. Okay, we're all done now, the first time through. Now I want you to notice something that I did. I had her go ahead and start over. And if others, you all four got done almost at the exact same time. But I always have kids trained to go back and read, start rereading so that it's not like, I'm done. Yes. Because that shuts people yeah. down from going yeah. ahead and reading. Why did I stagger the reading so that you weren't all reading it in chorus? You didn't want them listening to what the other person was saying and repeating. And it's easier for you to take out what the child is saying if they're all kind of stuck. Right. Also, I, you know, if you had not, if you'd slid your finger, I could be noticing that instead of picking it up and putting it down. So we're, we're teaching one to one. Okay. And if they slide, they don't learn one to one. They have okay. to pick it up and put it down and pick it up and put it down. We're also teaching left to right across one line of print. So there's, you know, some very basic concepts of print that are being taught here. But isn't it fun to have the, this size book that you could read it to the kids and model for them and then have them do it. And, and afterwards, when they get done, instead of talking like we're doing, I would say, well, tell me what that book was about. You know, let's talk about it. What part of his clothes do you think you'd like to wear? And have those kind of conversations with the kids. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So this is... Um, this happens to be some of Fountas and Pinnell's work, if you've seen their work before. This is in their Leveled Literacy Intervention Kits. Okay, and the last one that I have tonight is going to be Gabby is Hungry. Okay, and I keep all the books here while I'm introducing the book, because otherwise I'm not going to have everyone's attention, <laughs> as you well know. So, this book is about Gabby, and we've had several books about Gabby that we've read before. This one says, Gabby is hungry. Oh, goodness, wonder what Gabby wants. So, what do you think Gabby's wanting? Oh, 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 somebody's grilling, aren't they? Hmm. What are they cooking? Do you know? Um, looks like meat of some kind. Right. Maybe a hot dog or a hamburger. You think hot dog might be right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's why Gabby's hungry. And he's watching Matt. I see a hot dog bun. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> he better be careful. What might Gabby do? He might swipe it. <laughs> he might just step in there and take it. He might. Hope somebody else has one now. Yes. Oh. That 
is Nick. Nick has one now. Gabby is so hungry. I wonder what Gabby is going to do. I think he's going to steal a hot dog. You think he's going <laughs> to steal a hot dog? I think we have to read to find out, don't we? What do you believe? We're going to have to stop it. <laughs> you can stop the camera. Okay. Look what I